Hello, Hello everybody, everybody, and, and welcome, welcome to Friday Apocryphal Podcast, your one-stop one shop for everything Friday Apocryphal and Podcast, and boy, do we have a show for you today. Today we are covering the Apocalypse of Peter, chapters 1 through 8. <clears throat> and this is uh, the the Ethiopian Apocalypse of Peter. Yes, there's uh, multiple Apocalypses of Peter. Yeah, I think uh, in uh, in your version over there, it does go in depth a little bit more. But for uh, that one actually has the Coptic version in it, yeah, which is very different from the one we'll be reading today. But the Ethiopian version is way more interesting. So for, forgive us. Actually, no, you know, you're not going to have to forgive us. You're going to love it. You're going to love this book. <laughs> it is it is so interesting. There's yeah. so much cool shit in here. So, so what are you reading out of? Uh, I am reading from Lost Scriptures, books that did not make it into the New Testament from Bart Ehrman. Now, as we discovered with the Gospel of Peter, uh, at least for that one, a lot of stuff he kind of left out, and I'm still unsure why. Yeah. Uh so not in the apocalypse of Peter. No, no. In the apocalypse of Peter, everything is still here. I did make sure to check on that. Uh, so everything is still here. Uh, and so that's the book that we'll be reading from today. It kind of goes along with his lost Christianities. If you have not read that, you should, it's a good book. Uh, and it's also on audible. If, uh, you know, you got too much shit going on, which I totally understand. If you want to hear someone to be like, this is audible, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It is true. They they do that all the time. Oof. Or you could do a lever box production. And oh, yeah. Uh, lever for this is oh, a that's lever box recording. Even worse. <laughs> Those are pretty bad. All lever box recordings are in the public domain. <laughs> Thanks, Brett. Uh, so, the Apocalypse of Peter. Three different apocalypses surviving from ancient Christianity claimed to have been written by Peter. The one presented here was discovered in 1887 in the tomb of a Christian monk, along with the Gospel of Peter. It was subsequently found in a fuller Ethiopic translation. This apocalypse was well known in early Christianity. Some churches counted it among the New Testament scriptures. Uh, and this includes, for example, the uh, Mortorian Canon, which I believe is uh, our, it's one of our oldest canon lists. Mm. It might be our oldest, actually, like, extant one oh. uh, and not just like a, a list that was like recorded by some like where somebody was citing another canon list mm -hmm. um, I think that might actually be the oldest extant one um, anyways uh, eventually though it came to be excluded from the canon in part because Christians realized it was uh, pseudonymous so they realized that it, there was no way this was written by Peter absolutely yeah uh, even then, however, the book continued to exercise a significant influence on Christian thought. This is the first Christian writing to describe a journey through hell and heaven, an account that inspired a large number of successors, including, ultimately, Dante's Divine Comedy. So, I suppose we've all been looking forward to reading some of this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you know it. This, this is what it's all been building to. Finally. This is the crescendo. And, uh... Uh, don't worry, it only goes up from here because that's how crescendos work. Uh, huh? The book begins with Peter and the other disciples on the Mount of Olives listening to Jesus deliver his apocalyptic discourse. That's in Mark 13. Peter asks about the coming judgment and Jesus uh, responds by, of course, describing hell, uh, <laughs> which is fun. Uh, so there is some ambiguity over whether Jesus actually takes Peter on a journey through these two abodes. Uh, or simply describes them in such vivid detail that it feels as if Peter is seeing them. Uh, there is no ambiguity, however, concerning the respective fates of those destined for one place or the other, because depending on your sins, you get punished differently. And we are going to get a good amount of descriptions on those. Uh, now, I can, I can hand it off to you. The descriptions don't come until a little bit later, uh, but... I'm not sure if it's in this if it's in this version or in a different one, but at least one version of the Apocalypse of Peter uh, describes angels, and I remember reading it years ago, and it was it described them as being very gorgeous, so gorgeous that they are indescribable. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, so it pontificates a little bit about how sexy the angels are. Uh, 
and then it goes on to to the hell stuff. It's like when H.P. Lovecraft is like, and before me there was an unspeakable horror, you know, and its appearance was like this. <laughs> you know, uh, that I think that's a quote. Yeah, yeah, a direct quote. I'll remember that. Yes, yes, I you hope will you do. Anyways, why don't I hop into the Ethiopic version of the Apocalypse of Peter? Sounds good to me. All right, chapter one. The second coming of Christ and resurrection of the dead, which Christ revealed through Peter to those who died for their sins because they did not keep the commandment of God, their creator. And he, Peter, pondered thereon that he might perceive the mystery of the Son of God, the merciful and lover of mercy. And when the Lord was seated upon the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him, and we besought and entreated him severally and implored him, saying to him, Declare to us what are the signs of your coming and of the end of the world. It is interesting that it does hop from third person to first person, but I guess it would be... uh, Maybe, you know, if you were to accept this into a canon, maybe they were initially like, oh, this is just an introduction. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, what are the signs of your coming? I'm not in- sure if they actually had the, if they had titles in the Ethiopian text. Um, I'm not sure. I, don't I wouldn't think so. I also wouldn't think so. Yeah. But. Declare to us what are the signs of your coming and of the end of the world, that we may perceive and mark the time of your coming, and instruct those who come after us, to whom we preach the word of your gospel, and whom we install in your church, that they, when they hear it, may take heed to themselves and mark the time of your coming. Which he said he didn't know. Yeah. Well, he didn't know when the, when the, the judgment day will be. Right. And no one does. Right. And the Lord answered us, saying, Take heed that no one deceive you, and that you not be doubters and serve other gods. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ. Believe them not, neither draw near to them. Sorry. For the coming of the Son yeah, believe, of God. Yeah, believe them not. Yeah. No, I was laughing at the come in his name. Oh, okay. okay. Just Great. scream like Jesus or God. Wow. For the coming of the Son of God shall not be plain, but as the lightning that shines from the east to the west, so will I come upon the clouds of heaven with great host in my majesty. With my cross going before my face, will I come in my majesty, shining seven times brighter than the sun. Mm -hmm. Will I come in the majesty with all my saints, my angels." And my father shall set a crown upon my head, that I may judge the quick and the dead, and recompense everyone according to his works. So, (coughs) that's a hell of a lot brighter than the sun. Yeah. Yeah. So, we already see why this has been excluded from canon. (coughs) It's because this is when Jesus is on the Mount of Olives, and... uh, He has multiple references to his own crucifixion, which he did not know for certain was going to happen. No, he kind of did, though. Well, he he, he knew that that something was was going to happen, but he didn't know it was going to be a crucifixion. I guess. Well, uh, did he? I feel like. And furthermore, it's uh, it's. Hold on, I feel like there were. I feel like there were. With my cross going before my face, will I come in my majesty? Right. So this it, this presupposes that there's like a Christian iconography of the cross, with the cross being representative of Christ. Sure, that. So, uh, but also, I I feel like there were places in, uh, places in the Gospels, like before the crucifixion, uh, that he like made allusions to a cross. He definitely you know knew he was gonna die eventually, even though there was that weird part about him like contending with God about it. Uh, but I feel like there were allusions to the cross, weren't there? Were there? I feel like there were. I think that there were like asides that were not like what Jesus was saying, where it was like the author being like, uh, Jesus who died on the cross, like that kind of thing. Oh, I don't even remember. I think. 
Oh, whatever. I'm sure. I'm sure someone in the comment section will. Someone tell us. in the comments yeah. will tell us, and then we will know. All right, chapter two. Oh, that was a quickie. Yeah, yeah. These aren't uh, super long. Yeah. And you learn a parable from the fig tree. As soon as its shoots have come forth and the twigs grown, the end of the world shall come. Oh. So. Watch out for fig trees. <laughs> you want to stop the end of the world. Good oh, thing. Get rid of those. Good thing it's a parable. <laughs> Do you remember the parable of the fig tree? Uh, barely. Barely. Uh, that's the one. Oh, that's the one where uh, it, uh, it doesn't... Um, it doesn't like produce before it's time, mm-hmm. right? It has to be the right time to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when its shoots come forth and its twigs grown, the end of the world shall come. Right? Yeah, yeah. So when it's the appropriate time. Yeah. Uh, but see the, the way that that was used in, I don't think, was that used apoc- apocalyptically in the gospels? Mm. I guess it kind of was. Kind of. Well, it was you sorry? Eschatologically is what I mean. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I guess kinda. Yeah. Yeah. And I, Peter, answered and said to him, "Interpret the fig tree to me. How can we understand it? For throughout all its days, the fig tree sends forth shoots, and every year it brings forth its fruit for its master. What then does the parable of the fig tree mean? We do not know." And the master answered and said to me. Do you not understand that the fig tree is the house of Israel? It is like a man who planted a fig tree in his garden, and it brought forth no fruit. And he sought the fruit many years, and when he did not find it, he said to the keeper of his garden, Uproot this fig tree, so that it does not make our ground unfruitful. And the gardener said to his master, Let us rid it of weeds, and dig the ground round about it, and water it. If then it does not bear fruit, we will straight away uproot it from the garden. <laughs> they were watering the tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they just never took care. Yeah, of they, it. they they never gave a shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wonder it didn't make any. Fruit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Morons. Yeah. yeah, which is which is why I guess you know that there's the suggestion there, like, hey, maybe we should, you know, put some effort into it, and oh. then you know before we tear it out completely. Mm. I don't know. So okay, that that makes sense in the analogy. Sure. Okay. Have you not understood that the fig tree is the house of Israel? Verily, I say to you, when its twigs have sprouted forth in the last days, then shall false Christs come and awake expectation, saying, I am the Christ who has now come into the world. And when they perceive the wickedness of their deeds, they shall turn away and deny him whom our fathers praised, the first Christ whom they crucified, and therein sinned a great sin. Yeah, so there are... There were a lot of people claiming to be a Messiah or a Christ. Uh, and in fact, ju- just Josephus notes a few of them, actually. Uh, like the Egyptian uh, is one of them. There was also, uh, there was like an unnamed one. Uh, and then there was a Jesus of Jerusalem, mm-hmm. which uh, he lived uh, about... 30 years after this Jesus. Uh, yeah, I know, Ruben. I know. Why is there a Greg Harris 1993 Red Sox card? Well, what else are we using it for? Why do we have it? Uh, That's a great question. I don't. I do. I do know the answer to this you one. Know the answer. Yeah, so uh, that was actually at my place because a long time ago, um, my grandpa was like, you like sports, right? And then he bought like a whole bunch of baseball cards and then just dumped them off at my place. And I mean, I'm pretty sure they're all worthless. Uh, so I just have like a box of them yeah. and I just like took, you know, a card out of a random box and it was just that. So I was like, yeah, this will do. Okay, what if they're those? Uh, Greg Harris from the 1993 Red Sox? For yeah. all your fans. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's where that card came from. Yeah, you can't even play it in a game. Yeah, you, I don't understand the purpose of baseball trading cards. Well, maybe some of them are worth money. Some of like, them, I'm certainly. Right, yeah. So here's how I understand it: the cards that are old are worth more, obviously, but mostly because the people who were collectors are still into those old cards. Sure. And the new cards aren't worth anything because no one's into collecting them. <laughs> that's just. 
That's just how it is with that. All right. Well, we'll see what other old, what old shit I got. So I don't know. I did trading card market stuff. You know that. Yeah, with baseball especially. You're a big baseball guy. No, but yeah. the, I still mm-hmm. did eBay crap. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so basically these false Christs come and they deny Jesus. Uh, but this deceiver is not the Christ. When they reject him, he shall slay them with the sword. And there shall be many martyrs. Then the then shall the twigs of the fig tree, that is the house of Israel, shoot forth. Many shall become martyrs at his hand. Enoch and Elijah shall be sent to teach them that it is the deceiver who must come into the world and do signs and wonders in order to deceive. Shout out to those guys. <laughs> and therefore, those who die by his hand shall be martyrs and shall be reckoned among the good and righteous martyrs who have pleased God in their life. So do you so, remember? I uh, remember Enoch and Elijah in their DBZ battle against mm-hmm. Satan. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was in, was it in the, the Apocalypse of Elijah, I want to say? I think so. Yeah, uh, that was a pretty, you could go back and watch that uh, that episode at some point. Not now, not now, you guys stay here. Uh, but, the, but the episode was pretty cool i think the scene was pretty great Mm -hmm. uh they are literally fighting in the sky and uh it does sound like an anime battle Mm yeah yeah it's it is pretty cool so uh that's kind of hearkening back to that tradition all right and after uh chapter three i'll hand it off to you sounds good so chapter three and he showed me in his right hand the souls of all people and on the palm Oh, by the way they lose uh initially they lose right yes yes <laughs> they lose and on the palm of his right hand the image of that which will be accomplished at the last day how the righteous and the sinners shall be separated and how those who are upright in heart will fare and how the evil doers shall be rooted out to all eternity we Beheld. Beheld. We do have a beheld shirt. Oh, everybody go <laughs> buy the beheld shirt. Thanks for anyone who buys them. <laughs> yes. But we beheld how the sinners wept in great affliction and sorrow until all who saw it with their eyes wept, whether righteous or angels, and he himself also. And I asked him and said to him, Lord, Allow me to speak your word concerning the sinners. It were better for them if they had not been created. And the Savior answered. Oh, so yeah, there's the the, the Job argument, yeah. Yeah. And the Savior answered and said to me, Peter, why do you say that not to have been created were better for them? You resist God. You would not have more compassion than he for his image, for he has created them and brought them forth out of not being. Now, because you have seen the lamentation which shall come upon the sinners in the last days, therefore your heart is troubled. But I will show you their works whereby you they have sinned against the Most High. You know, uh, that wasn't a very good response. Uh, so No, so <laughs> like you can bring forward the argument you know, that um, God has perfect knowledge of the future. And therefore, he knows everyone who's going to be saved. Right. And everyone who's not. And he's also responsible for the creation and like livelihood and lives of everyone, including those who are saved and not saved. In fact, he explicitly commands people to be fruitful and multiply. Yeah. And as a consequence of that, like it really just looks like he's intentionally creating souls for the sole purpose of forcing them to suffer forever. Yeah. And um, I think with, with this argument, uh, it, his response to Peter is like, you don't care more than I do because I created them, even though it's Peter's obviously showing that he cares more than he does. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> He's basically like, look, you couldn't possibly care more than God does, but uh, let me show you what they did. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think Peter is even like saying that they're not evil. Mm-hmm. He's just saying it's better that they were never born. Right. <laughs> So I'm going to hand it off to you for chapter four. All right. 
fantastic chapter four hey make sure you guys drop a like and subscribe if you haven't all that good stuff because yes. uh, it all helps the channel uh and also also uh before it's too late i don't know if ryan is still watching but you need to tell me what size shirt you wear so i can send you that shirt oh yeah because i because I, I i messaged him on patreon hasn't got back to me but i need to send you that shirt otherwise <laughs> we'll just send you the largest size that we can right and just XXL. hope it fits <laughs> yep It'll fit if it doesn't we'll send you the <laughs> smallest size next time you win <laughs> combine them or you could just tell us your shirt size that that, would be, that works that too would yeah. <laughs> anyways yes uh on to chapter four and we're off to a really good start with chapter four because behold, behold. behold. Now, what shall come upon them in the last days when the day of god and the day of decision of the judgment of god comes from the east to the west shall all the children of men be gathered together before my father who lives forever. So now they're doing like a proper trial scene. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is because they had, you know, illusions to that before, but they never had everyone all together before the father. They right. just said that everyone will, will be judged before the father, but not all together at once. Right. Yeah. Uh, continuing on. Uh, and he shall command hell to open its bars of adamant and get to open. Yeah, that's what it says to open its bars of adamant and give up all that is therein. And the wild beasts and the fowls shall he command to restore all the flesh that they have devoured because he wills that people should appear for nothing perishes before God and nothing is impossible with him because all things are his. You know, I get what he's saying here. He wants people to appear in their human form for this, uh, which is why he's asking, you know, animals to regurgitate everything that they've eaten. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's been a while. Yeah, that's not how it works. Uh, they're going to shit it out. So, yeah. and then that, you know, kind of, you know, effectively is like fertilizer and the plants use it. Man, that would fuck up a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of those pieces could be in somebody else's body because like you use it as fertilizer, right? And then the plant grows and maybe somebody eats the plant mm -hmm. and then it's in that body. So... Enough. They got it. <laughs> yeah, it's not really possible to do, or they just get new bodies, right? Yeah, that, they can just yeah. get new bodies. Yeah, I guess. Oh. Uh, for all things come to pass on the day of decision, on the day of judgment, at the word of God, and as all things were done when He created the world and commanded all that is therein, and it was done. Even so shall it be in the last days, for all things are possible with God. And therefore he said in the scripture, Son of man, prophesy upon the several bones and say to the bones. Dim bones? Is it dim bones? I don't know. So, yeah, uh, prophesy. Son of man is Ezekiel, right? That, is, that was the title for Son of Man, or for Ezekiel. Yeah, that is very true. Uh prophesy upon even though that wasn't really a okay whatever um it wasn't literal anyways uh son of man prophesy upon the several bones and say to the bones bone unto bone in joints sinew nerves flesh and skin and hair uh thereon uh so yeah this is obviously a reference to to the valley of dry bones mm. in ezekiel um even though that was certainly not meant to be an actual resurrection. It's very clear in context that they were talking about the restoration of Israel. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so but that's what it is, Lawrence. It uh, is the restoration of Israel. Oh, right. Because Israel is because the, you need to the create the and, new Jerusalem. Yeah, that's right, right. That's right. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Uh, man, language is horrible. Uh, and soul and spirit shall yeah shall the great Uriel give them at the commandment of God for God has set set him over the resurrection of the dead at the day of judgment. Um, so 
we've had Uriel pop up a few times in many mm. different texts. I think he was said to do that in Enoch. I said what was he says he? to have happened right now. Was is he what in they Enoch? Talked about in Enoch, but you can check. Yeah, I'm I'm unsure. Uh, so it would have been fairly early on, right in the book of the Watchers. I'm guessing. Uh, if it was an Enoch, but maybe it was in like a different Enochic work, right? Because we've read three Enochic mm-hmm. works. So it might've been in one of those, um, rankings section. Maybe I, you know. I do remember someone was given power over the specific thing. I just yeah. don't remember if it was Uriel, uh, either way, uh, continue on here. Behold, behold, behold. and consider the corns of wheat that are sown in the earth as something dry and without soul do men sow them in the earth and they live again and bear fruit and the earth restores them as a pledge entrusted to it so even when they think they won't bear anything they do anyways because of this restoration i remember them mentioning like what these angels do Mm. well i remember okay so the actual watchers right they get kicked uh, kicked out, but I feel uh, like I feel like it wasn't a different text entirely. It'll be second Enoch, I was thinking, like the list of angels. There was that big list of angels. Yeah, I mentioned Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel. Yeah, I forget where they're where they list their jobs though. Yeah, it's somewhere. I I know that it's in the Enoch books somewhere. Right. Yeah. Somewhere. Uh, man. All right. Whatever. We can just hop back to that eventually maybe someone will google it uh and this which dies that is sown as seed in the earth and shall shall become alive and be restored to life is man oh hold on oh you found names and functions of the seven archangels um so there is uriel one of the holy angels who is over the world and over tartarus Maybe he guards the gates. Wow, well, okay. Not at the end yeah. times. Who knows? Oh, I felt like they had a whole thing about where, what they did when the world ended. I don't know, though. There, there definitely was, mm-hmm. uh, but I don't remember which book it was. <laughs> but there are different angels for different purposes yeah, yeah. Uh, related to death and resurrection in here. So uh, Remiel is uh, over those who rise. Um, Gabriel's over paradise. Uh, oh, okay. Sarakael is over the spirits who sin in the spirit. So, so he's the one overseeing their judgment. Yeah, and Raphael's over the spirits of men. So, like, it's arguable that they all play some role that's similar to what Uriel does here. You know, a- April, I'm not sure about that actually. I'd like I'd like uh what what book does he or I guess what uh yeah, what book or what paper or what blog post does he write that in? I haven't actually seen him note uh like say anything about that, but uh I could see that as a possibility, but it'd be really weird that they wouldn't make that evident, I guess. At least like in the they wouldn't I feel like they would have presented the narrative that way if he was trying to be king of Israel, because they were looking for uh, someone to you know, uphold the dynastic promise, right? Well, so if, if someone was, was trying to be king of Israel, you would, and if you thought that he was you know, the actual uh, king of Israel, uh, then you, I feel like you would kind of stress that in the text. Like there were times where it seemed like he was... Um, where he was say, saying that, you know, other people were saying that he he was the king of Israel, right? Or trying to say that he said he was the king of Israel, but I don't remember that being his own words, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least not in the Davidic sense. Uh, but he would be. Actually, well, he's from the lineage, right? But it was, well, he wasn't trying to get like, you know, Joseph, the, the office. Joseph would be. His dad is of the lineage. It would be a more legitimate 
uh, claimant to the throne. Right, but I'm, I'm saying that he wasn't trying. It didn't seem like he was trying right. to get uh, an actual political office. Oh, right. Is, right. is what fact, I'm he saying. He pretty explicitly avoided that. Yeah, I guess like it, it would make sense if, you know, he was trying to uh, keep it uh, secret. Sure, that would make sense. Uh, because you don't want, uh, you know, people thinking you're a revolutionary about to usurp everything. Uh, so I, I get why, you know, he'd want to do that. Uh, however, since uh, these texts were written so much later, I don't think that would have mattered. Mm-hmm. Um, because like he'd already be dead, right? Like they're writing even from the standpoint of, hey, he was crucified. Uh, so either way, he's already dead. Uh, even if you think, you know, he resurrected, uh, he still died. So it, he wouldn't really. I mean, at that, that point in history, he would have been dead and not pose a threat. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm unsure. I'd uh. Yeah, I'll have to watch uh, whatever video that is, though. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. Anyways. Yeah, keep going. Where the hell was I? Right, 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 right. Okay, so, uh, yeah, and this this which dies that is sown as seed in the earth and shall become alive and be restored to life is man. Uh, how much more shall God raise up on the day of decision those who believe in him and are chosen of him? For though, uh, for whose sake he made the world, and all things shall the earth restore on the day of decision. For it also shall be judged with them, and the heaven with it. So yeah, everything will be judged together. Right. Uh, uh and that was actually the uh, end of chapter four. So we're moving on to chapter five now. Wonderful. Yeah. Hey, if you're enjoying the stream so <laughs> far, like, comment, subscribe, share it with your yeah, friends, we do. We, yeah, we don't. Uh, we don't chill it enough. Um, yes, chapter five. And this shall come at the day of judgment upon those who have fallen away from faith in God and have committed sin. Now, this is where we get to the good stuff. Okay. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for the epic descriptions of hell? Let's go to hell. All right. Cataracts of fire shall be let loose and darkness and obscurity shall come up and clothe and veil the whole world. Oh, and the waters shall be changed and turned into coals of fire and all that is in them shall burn and the sea shall become fire. It's a lot of fire. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of good stuff happening already. Under the heaven, there shall be a sharp fire that cannot be quenched, and it flows to fulfill the judgment of wrath. Filling up that cup of wrath. Yeah. Love it. Um, and the stars shall be melted by flames of fire. It's more fire. Yeah. Uh, that would make sense, though, for like... How much you know, fire angels. would you need to melt a star? Yes. Yeah, good, uh, good luck with, with that. <laughs> Need to uh, well, technically, stars are in plasma form. And yeah, you turn them into a a, a a gluon quark plasma by heating them up to over some hundred million degree mark. Yeah, so the the heat of fire you would need is to the point where it's no longer a fire. Yeah, so <laughs> regular matter is like the solid form of a quark gluon plasma. So I guess it's melting technically. <laughs> it's uh yeah no you can't you can't melt stars um sure sure like i said just way hotter than any star is currently yeah so hellfire is hotter than normal fire Uh, far 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 hotter a lot hotter there's there's limits to how cold things can get like there's there's no if you had even like hot things there is a limit to that if there is but it's it's insane. It is insane. It is insanely uh, hot. What's it called? Plank heat, I think, technically. Yeah, plank well, heat the, is the maximum um, amount of energy one plank can contain. Uh, a Kugelblitz was the name of the black hole that's created from pure from pure energy. It's still not plank heat. It's still not. I feel like by definition it is. It because is Because that's the point at which the, the wavelength is a plank length. 
Oh, that might be. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yes, then that actually is plank heat. Yeah, it, it has to be. Okay, but no Kugelblitz is the name of the black hole that's no created by we that. We can't make those. Okay, well, the yeah, point no is shit. that <laughs> Hellfire is really hot. Um, if any were in the atmosphere of Earth, it would probably be very problematic. Oh, yeah, it'd destroy all of us. What atmosphere? <laughs> yeah, what atmosphere? Yeah. <laughs> The uh, the rock formerly known <laughs> as the Earth. It's like Prince. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the stars should be melted by flames of fire, as they had not been. Yeah, as they had not been created, and the firmaments of the heaven. Yeah, of the heaven shall pass away for lack of water. Uh, what? That they thought that there was. Yeah. So firmament the firmament of water. Yep. Is. Remember the windows of heaven. Remember the windows of heaven in Genesis. Yeah, you yeah, had to nice. open up the uh, the windows, and that's how all the all the you know rain. So the water gets through the firmament. Yeah. So yeah. So all the stuff that's up there would be heated up and destroyed. It would be it just evaporate. Yeah. No, because that's in heaven. They're talking about the firmament. Yeah. Itself. Yeah. I think heaven gets destroyed, and a new heaven gets made, according to a lot of lore. Remember. Well, yeah, that's that's the the. So yeah, that so this would be included, and the heavens or the stars, perhaps. Well, it's as that well, it's so. that the earth would be, kind of the new heaven, oh. I think is the idea. Okay. Yeah. So alien invasion. It yes, it's Independence Day. Um. Yeah. Uh, so Cultural knowledge is so. Funny. <laughs> yeah, and the firmaments of the heaven shall pass away for lack of water and shall be as though they had not been. And the lightnings of heaven shall be no more. And by their enchantment, they shall affright the world. The spirits of the dead bodies shall be like them and shall become fire at the commandment of God. And as soon as the whole creation dissolves, the people who are in the east shall flee to the west, and those who are in the west to the east. Those who are in the south shall flee to the north, and those who are in the north shall flee to the south. And in all the places shall the wrath of a fearful fire overtake them, and an unquenchable flame driving them shall bring them to the judgment of wrath, to the stream of unquenchable fire which flows, flaming with fire. And when the, when the waves thereof part themselves one from another, burning, there shall be a great gnashing of teeth among the children of men. Now, if, if you remember... There was a uh, a river of fire that was said to be going through uh, a lot of Anakic literature. Yes. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. Yeah, I a made lot a of card. Do you want me to look that up? I forgot the name. The, of the river, river of too. fire one. Yeah, I did. Mm. It had a very interesting specific name. The river of fire is pretty consistent. Yeah, it pops up in a few of them. Uh, anyways, yeah. So that is actually the end of chapter five. Uh, so we're on a roll right now, but we're gonna keep going. With uh, with this hell imagery. Hey, Lawrence. Yeah. So in the beginning, God creates the heaven and the earth. Yeah. Where was he? He was around. Who created that? Yeah, good question. <laughs> God again. Okay. It just always existed. Where was he? Just always existed. <laughs> yes. He was just, uh, you know, outside of space and time. Where's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who created that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, then shall they all behold! behold, they shall all behold me coming upon an eternal cloud of brightness. Okay. That one's pretty funny. They shall behold him coming on an eternal cloud of brightness. Now that one's better than the other ones. I don't know. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold up. So you, so you thought the other ones were funnier than this one. Okay. No, this one's the funny. Okay. You know, fuck you guys. Um, and the angels of God who are with me shall sit upon the throne of my glory at the right hand of my heavenly father. And he shall set a crown upon my head. And when the nations behold, behold. when the nations behold it, they shall weep every nation for itself. Then shall he command them to enter into the river of fire while the works of every one of them shall stand before them. 
Rewards shall be given to everyone according to his deeds. As for the elect who have done good, they shall come to me and not see the death by the devouring fire. But the unrighteous, the sinners, and the hypocrites shall stand in the depths of darkness that shall not pass away, and their chastisement is in is the fire, and angels bring forward their sins and prepare for them a place wherein they shall be punished forever, everyone according to his transgression. So here is the individual judgment. Everyone gets kind of a... Yeah, you get your own personal hell. Get your own. Per- you, well, the thing is, it's kind of personal because it depends on what you did. Mm-hmm. And you didn't do well, very much. What wrong. if you did multiple things? Well, I, I don't know. Um, but you, you get like, one of them. And maybe so you're stuck in an office space forever, and you're not really sure when your hours are, and it's just <laughs> uncomfortable, and no one really reassures you, and sometimes you trip or something, and like drop your files, and no one helps you. Yeah, maybe something like that. And you just get yeah. laughed at. Yeah, very. Uh, that's see, that's that's a much lower form of hell. It's actually called heck. Heck. Mm-hmm. Well, or because the, the they, do, they don't put stick. you through hell. They just heckle you. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah. Ooh. Uh. Anyways, yeah. So everyone gets their own little uh quick trial, like on Judge Judy. Uh. <laughs> Uriel, the angel of God, shall bring forth the souls of the sinners who perished in the flood. About time we heard from them. Yeah, it has been a really long time. Yeah, yeah, it has. Uh, And of all who dwelt in all idols, in every molten image, in every object of love, and in pictures, and of those who dwelt on all hills in stones and by the wayside, whom yeah. people called gods. Judge Judy should get a sequel called Judge Judy and Executioner. I that, think Judge Judy should get a good. sequel pretty good. called Supreme Court Justice Judy. <laughs> that would be uh, a trip. Be she lying. is a judge. Yeah, yeah. She could be. Very if I ever become president of the United yeah. States. Yeah. Judge Judy... Uh, I will Justice. even expand the court by a seat just wow. to put Judge Judy. I think you have to do it by two. Yeah. Mm. Because it has, it has to, to be, be by two, yeah. Uh, who's another TV judge? Uh, J- judge Brown? Brown, judge Brown. Yeah, yeah. the other guy. Who's judge the Judy and Judge famous. Brown. Yep. The Supreme Court justices. <laughs> Greg uh, Mathis. Oh, oh, my God. I forgot about that guy. Oh, my God. No. I'll add a third one. Wow, you can't. You'd have to, you have have to add a, a fourth one. To uh, legal Eagle. <laughs> legal <laughs> Eagle, hell yeah. Okay. Oh, that will be pretty cool, I think. All right, all right. <laughs> Balance court now, folks. Yep. Yeah, right. Uh, like the voice actor for Harvey Birdman, <laughs> attorney at law. Or uh, Lionel Hutz. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 He but he died. has to stay in character. The guy died. Played Lionel Hutz. Oh, uh-huh. did he? Yeah, he was also Troy McClure, I think, on the show. Uh, oh, shit. That and sucks. so, yeah, that's why they're gone. Has been around for forever, I guess, so that makes yeah. sense. I don't know. He died 12 years in. <laughs> shit. Um, yeah. <clears throat> All right, anyways. Um, yeah, so a whole bunch of uh, idol worshipers. Uh, they're, they're naughty. Um. Yeah, whom people called gods. They shall be burned with them in everlasting fire, and all of them with their dwelling places are destroyed. They shall be punished eternally. So uh, these guys, um, it looks like the people of the flood are included. Uh, They were, in this interpretation, just idol worshipers, or that's the thing that they are known for, I guess. And they are all burning with their idols, just like they made their idols in the fire. Ooh, they're molten images, so they too will be molten. Wonderful! It's exactly what they deserve. Yeah, right, right. Ugh. Uh, chapter seven. Let's move on to that. I start of chapter seven. Oh, you 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 want to you want to read more more hell stuff? Why don't you read chapter eight, Lawrence? Because then it's even. I mean, do whatever. I did one, two, and three. Four, five, and six. I, I guess, yeah. 
I'll do seven and eight. Okay. Not even. Chapter seven. Then shall men and women come to the place prepared for them. By their tongues, wherewith they have blasphemed, by the way of righteousness, shall they be hanged up. Yep. There is spread under them unquenchable fire so that they do not escape it. Behold. 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 Another place. There is a pit, great and full. In it are those who have denied righteousness. The angels of punishment chastise them, and there they kindle upon the fire of their torment. And again, behold. 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 Two women. They hang them up by their neck and their hair. They shall cast them into the pit. These are those who plaited their hair, not to make themselves beautiful, but to turn them to fornication, that they might ensnare the souls of men to perdition. <laughs> so, because someone was hot and getting laid. Mm-hmm. Yep. Specifically the women. The women that yes. were hot and getting laid. And the men who lay with them oh. in fornication shall be hung by their loins Ooh. in that place of fire. And they shall say one to another, we didn't know that we should come to everlasting punishment. <laughs> And the murderers and those who have made common cause with them shall they cast into fire in a place full of venomous beasts, and they shall be tormented without rest, feeling their pains, and their worms shall be as many in number as a dark cloud. So the the murderers and accomplices will be ca- kind of treated like, uh, shit, what's his name? Uh, Prometheus. Hmm. Essentially, right? Kind of. Except with, with venoms and... Oh, no, no. Yeah, with venoms and worms and... Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, the thing is, it's forever. Yeah. So they're, they're not ever, like, healed. They just never die from that stuff. Well, everyone here is getting everlasting punishment. Right, yeah. yeah. And the angel Ezrael shall bring forth the souls of those who have been slain. And they shall hold the torment of those who slew them and say one to another, Righteousness and justice is the judgment of God. For we heard, but we believed not that we should come into this place of eternal judgment. So so this is like us, right? Because we reject God. Right, right, right we yeah. We get yeah. to watch the torment of those who uh kill people oh no hold on, like can you, hold on reread that part again and sorry the angel and oh no this is only people who have been slain oh uh, okay yeah they, because they didn't believe and they were slain they uh behold the torment of those who slew them gotcha forever okay All right, chapter 8. And near this flame there is a pit, great and very deep, and into it flows from above all manner of torment, foulness, and excrement. Yeah? (laughs) Yeah, yep. Shit. Yes. And women are swallowed up there into their necks and tormented with great pain. These are they who cause their children to be born untimely. And have corrupted the work of God who created them. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. So, yeah, like a uh, forced miscarriage, right? Oh, okay, yeah. So forced That's, miscarriage, but it also sounds like because when it says "be born," uh, <clears throat> before they should be, it sounds also like it could apply to premature babies. It could. I so like at eight months, it's like, ha, 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 you bitch, you're gonna die in liquid shit. Yeah. Um. But, no, I think it's a reference to intentional miscarriage yeah, because yeah. that's actually something that, um, unless it was done as a punishment, it was uh, something that was punishable. Right. Now, it wasn't like a major thing. Like, you would get a fine, basically, for forcing a miscarriage. Sure, yeah. yeah. <coughs> so, yeah, that would make sense for this to so, be that. Instead of being in horrible physical pain all the time, they get to 
be neck deep in shit. Yep. Yeah. Opposite. Oh, sorry. Partial shit. Mm-hmm. Opposite them shall be another place where children sit alive and cry to God. And flashes of lightning go forth from those children and pierce the eyes of those who, for fornication's sake, have caused their destruction. So, you know, those women who sleep around and take birth control. and mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Of course, of course. Uh, for them. They get abortions. And well, then, and then uh, their, their kid... Their unborn kids stares into their souls while it weeps with lightning. Yeah, flashes of lightning go through the eyes of these uh, prospective mothers. Wow, wow, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's a lot. That's heavy. Yes, I, I guess that's. But why also, I, what did the kid do? To deserve that, nothing, right? Yeah. So why the are they go, stuck? No, in there? the kid goes to heaven. No, 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 it says the, wait, wait. the opposite them. Oh, no, no, no. The children t- sit alive and cry to God. Right, but they're opposite the... Oh, right. So the children are also in hell because they've been corrupted. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. So This shit's wild. Like That's why people <laughs> uh, protest in front, of, in front of abortion clinics. Totally, yeah, because you're, you're damning yourselves and the, the baby to, to hell. For eternal suffering. Yeah. Well, if you if you take this mm-hmm. uh, this apocalypse of Peter approach. Yeah. Other men and women shall stand above them naked, and their children stand opposite them in a place of delight, and a sigh a cry to God because of their parents saying, There uh, these are they who despised and cursed and transgressed your commandments and delivered us to death. They have cursed the angel that formed us and have hanged us up and begrudged us in the light that you have made, that you have given to all creatures. And the milk of their mothers flowing from their breasts shall congeal, and from it shall come beasts devouring flesh, which shall come forth and turn and torment them forever with their husbands because they forsook the commandments of God and slew their children. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Horrible. So, are, okay, if I'm understanding this properly, the the breast milk uh-huh. will form these beasts. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Which then eat the flesh uh-huh. of the breasts. Uh-huh. And wow. Yeah. That's a new one. <laughs> and then they That's come intense. forth and torment them forever with their husbands. So... I'm trying so, to think of this in so terms of not like, only does the flesh eating beast torment the woman, yeah. but the woman's husband also. Right. It's not clear if this is actually that the husband is in hell necessarily, or or even these children, right? These could just be like inventions of hell for Right, them. yeah. Yeah, that is true. Right. Um yeah. what I'm wondering because I'm thinking of this in terms of like tradition history, right? What did they take from? Where is this from? Who knows? Like, what what is the inspiration for that imagery? Yaokai from Japan, <laughs> fucked up ones. I don't know. There's I'm probably to think of anything some that was form similar. of disease inspired it originally. Yes, the the disease that, that causes your breast milk to congeal into a giant creature that, that will kill you and your husband. No, no. What is that? no, but I'm trying to think of like what like have we read any works no. that seem to have like even hints of approaching that? No. No. Yeah, I didn't think we did. No. I feel like we'd remember that. Like demon boob milk monsters. It's <laughs> yeah. like you know, guts from uh, what? What's that one manga? Uh, Berserk. Berserk. Yeah, this is like that level with the the demon festing or feasting festival or whatever. Mm-hmm. As for their children, they shall be delivered to the angel Temlakos, and <sighs> those who slew them shall be tormented eternally. For God wills it so. So I don't remember that that angel. No. Nope. But. That's you know what? Whatever. <coughs> so that is the reading for the day. Yeah, uh, that is uh, about half of the apocalypse of the apocalypse of Peter, 
And boy, isn't it great. Yeah. yeah, you have people being hanged by their tongues and by, by their, their hair genitals and, uh, and dunked in liquid shit. And yeah. yeah, and and oh, all these unborn babies. Yep, yep. Uh, staring into the eyes of their mothers through through lightning eyes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that is a, a hell of a a book. Oh, welcome back. Christ brings a sword. Yes. Hello. Very uh, late. We're done. Yeah, yeah, we're done for the day. Yeah. So, hey, if you enjoyed the stream, check us out on Patreon, where you can win t-shirts, you can be on the show, you can be in our hangouts, you can do a lot of things. You know, you can buy a t-shirt. We have a lot of them. Um, hey, why don't you pin, pin one? Pin one at random. Yeah, okay, I got a whole bunch of them. There we go. Ha- hashtag blame the Bible. That's, yeah, a, that's classic. a classic. Yeah, it is. Classic t-shirt. Yeah. So, uh, yep, you can get that or any other T-shirt that we make. You can also check out our Amazon wish list. We got some new books. In. Yeah, we did. Uh, there was one, uh, I believe, uh, Germ- like the, the, the uh, inf- was it the, the influence of German thought or something like that? Like what influenced uh, change? Yeah, yeah, yeah the rise of uh, Germanic, like... Well, it was kind of based in the uh, the esoteric Nazi stuff that we were collecting. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't know if we'll get to because I know that you, I know that you know you, it's too you were, big of a project to reasonably ever get done. No, yeah, I get that. I get that. Like, um, you because I remember you were working on it, but then your computer. All oh, right. Yeah, I had a great script that, like theoretically though the script could just keep going on true forever true because there's so much information yeah um yeah but then that computer was destroyed right yeah which is really unfortunate uh <laughs> but yeah uh, thank you for people who sent in uh that book and we also got the a copy of the prose edda from someone don't mm-hmm. know who sent that one in uh but thank you to the people who sent those in yeah very much appreciated um so yeah we still have that wish list uh we got uh patreon uh in fact ryan won a shirt uh so i'm gonna send that to him later and let's see i mean you could get our video scripts Mm -hmm. uh you could i I already mentioned patreon did you yeah man i should listen more um yeah you're you're bad at i am you're bad i also mentioned our amazon wish list yeah no i got that and i i mentioned facebook and twitter already too facebook and twitter um i just did (laughs) so yeah uh email us milwaukee at gmail yeah we want to see the endings of the uh of your ahikar stories and uh lawrence diss tracks yep we want to see all of those things yeah until the next time we will see, see you on, on sunday. sunday for for more bible stuff